our last installment, I was showing you how to run a background, and I was just explaining it. So at the risk of being annoying, I'm going to do it one more time. You're, I'm not doing this to be annoying. It's just that this is something people don't really get. Scan. Background. Execute, which is number seven. Okay, you'll see a seven up here, a seven down here. The background just ran. What the instrument automatically does is it switches from the background window to the, the X window automatically. So you can't see the background on the screen. If I want to see the background spectrum, I push the background button. There are four memory blocks, an X memory, a Y memory, a Z memory, and a background memory. I just click the background. This is a perfect looking background. You will understand this more in class this week, but these are peaks due to water, okay? They're called OH stretching vibrations. These are C double bond O stretching vibrations from carbon dioxide. And these are OH bending vibrations from water. This is a very perfect characteristic air spectrum, okay? Now, why do we need this again? We need it because when we run our sample, these peaks would show up in the spectrum because there's air surrounding the sample. What the instrument automatically does is it subtracts this spectrum from your spectrum so that you don't have these peaks obliterating your spectrum, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the X memory. There's nothing in the X memory right now. And I'm gonna take the sample I prepared earlier and put it on the instrument. Now, I don't know if this is gonna to work, to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not too pleased with it right now. And the reason I'm not too pleased is it doesn't appear there's a lot of sample on the cell. But I'm gonna see if it'll work, okay? Again, what we're doing is we're depositing the sample on the surface of the plate. So right now, you can probably see a little bit of film on there. I'm gonna put it on the prongs in the sample holder. So the, sam the cell goes up on these prongs. Students always ask me, which way do you put it in? I say, put it in so that the sample's on the outside so you don't contaminate the instrument, okay? Now, right now it's kind of like an open Oreo cookie or an open sandwich cookie, right? It's like the, when you twist the Oreo open, You've got the cookie and you've got the icing on it. That's what it's like right now. You want the icing on the outside. All right, how do you run the spectrum? You go, and notice I took my glove off. You're really not supposed to run these instruments with gloves on because you might get chemicals on the keyboard. You hit scan, you hit X, and once again, you hit number seven, execute. Okay. Now, this is very typical. You can't see the spectrum. That's because it's off scale. You can manipulate the position of the spectrum with these white buttons. They're very useful. And a lot of times students are kind of afraid of them. And also, they're not used to how quickly they move. This button will bring the spectrum down. The fact that the gold lines at the top indicates the spectrum's on the top of the screen. So I'm gonna bring it down. Okay. We do have a spectrum, okay? So there's my spectrum. Now, how did I move it again? These buttons, this brings it down, this brings it up, okay? I wanna make it bigger, it's kinda of small. If I wanna make it bigger vertically, I use this arrow. See how it's getting bigger, okay? So this is a pretty good spectrum. Am I wild about it? No. I feel like I could have put more sample on that cell. If I don't think I have enough sample on the cell, I would put another couple drops of that solution on or make the solution a little more concentrated. It really is kind of trial and error and you're gonna play around a little. I do see, see components here that are consistent with the compound that I put on the plate. I see some evidence of an acid, a carboxylic acid. I see some hydrocarbon. I see a carbonyl in here. So this looks like it may be transcinamic acid. It could be a little stronger. All right, so that's how we make up a, um, set, a basic solid film and we run it. And this week I want you to run one of those. 
okay? Um, the I'm in the next mini film, I'm going to go over how to make a pellet, which is a little more complicated. So again, I'll see you in class. Watch these before you go in class because they do seem to cut down on some time. I don't have my goggles on. I'm being bad here. I put my goggles back on. Okay, I'll see you in the next film.